Recent statistics show that 7,606 businesses have left Victoria in the past 12 months. Well, how can anyone be surprised? The punishing lockdowns have endured, the dishonest government, the growing tax burden and the ridiculous policy agenda there. They're more Venezuelan than Australian, that's how I should put it. Victoria is a failed state. And like all busted and broken autocracies, there's soon going to be a statue of immortality in tribute to Chairman Dan. At least the pigeons will have somewhere appropriate to poop. But that doesn't help the Victorian business owners who are being left behind. Well, joining me now is door manufacturer and recovering Liberal Party power broker, Marcus Bastian. Marcus, thanks for your time. You, you've got a manufacturing business in Victoria. How real are the difficulties of doing business in your state? Well, Corey, thank you for having me on tonight. And uh, unfortunately, in Victoria, uh, business and uh, this state is becoming rapidly an oxymoron. We've seen uh, increases on all form of direct and indirect taxation, from payroll to uh, work safe and work cover. Um, the concept now of uh, putting loading and uh, casual sick pay uh, for casuals who are employed by businesses, um, totally new idea. Um, you've got a land tax that's gone through the roof, which will directly be um, passed on to business owners who are renting, renting commercial facilities. Um, and what you have in this state is a culture whereby a government goes out and spends money and then knocks on the door of business and forces changes to ensure that the rest of us pay for it. Um, it's gotten to a point where a South Australian Premier has come into Victoria um, to spruik its state's credentials uh, to move business into state. We know New South Wales and Queensland have seen uh, 20,000 business register in the last financial year in each state and we've seen Victoria lose 7,500. And anecdotally, I can tell you from the conversations I have with my customers and my suppliers, um, big businesses, medium businesses, these people who are deploying capital, employing Victorians, taking risks, working hard, are considering moving. Um, there are a number who have already moved. Uh, there are a number who are in the process of moving. Um, some are selling their homes and they're moving their families. And when these people leave your economy, they don't come back and they're very hard to replace. Um, Victoria has a significant problem uh, in the people who are exiting, and that is going to be felt perhaps not by the end of this year, but in the years to come. Things are going to become more expensive and it's going to be harder and harder to get certain trades and certain things done in this state. Yeah, I think that's true. The writing is on the wall, and I'm delighted to say the South Australian Premier is over there touting for business because he was on Twitter today <laughs> boasting about the lowest cost of doing business here and uh, some new survey saying it's got less regulations than other places, and that's the recipe for success, I'll say that. But I've got to go to a recent column you wrote um, in The Spectator. It was about work safe in Victoria. Now, this goes to what you were saying before. It's forcing employers to pay for mental health initiatives through massive rises in premiums. Now, these mental health initiatives are necessary because of the government's decisions during lockdowns and stuff. What's the impact been on your business? Well, the government's outsourced the responsibility, the financial responsibility of mental health to businesses. Um, we copped a 44% increase in work cover premiums. That was worth tens of thousands of dollars. Um, that's hard money. That's upfront money. That's money that should go towards rate, wage increases, investment in business, new machinery. Um, but now it's going to the government. And fundamentally, the problem is in WorkSafe, um, it's been hidden for several years, but come to the fore after COVID, that it costs um, a significant more amount of money to look after both physical and also uh, a significant increase in mental health injury. Um, WorkSafe is the wrong vehicle to be looking after mental health injury. Um, mental health injury is complex. Causational issues around mental health often don't necessarily start in the workplace. And it's very hard to define where and when the issues have occurred. Um, of course, if there's prosecutable behaviour, if there's um, willful negligence um, by organisations, then they should be held to account. But to take all businesses down this path is totally unfair. Um, the issue fundamentally as well with uh, mental health as part of WorkSafe is within six months, the majority of WorkSafe um, cases that are physically related end up being resolved and the person comes back to work, which is terrific. But the majority of mental health injury does not come back to work after six months. It's a very difficult thing to manage. And I don't think WorkSafe and a lot of people running businesses don't believe WorkSafe is set up or adequate to manage the issue. Um, but like so many things in Victoria, Corey, um, the oversight, uh, the review processes, the bureaucracies are strangled by um, the cronyism of this Labor government. 
Um, when WorkSafe looked like it was in a bad way, uh, one group of uh, people got moved in and one group of people loyal to this Premier and to this state government was moved in. Um, like so many of the oversight committees, both within the bureaucracy, um, but even more particularly within the Labor Party, um, whatever happens, happens because Daniel Andrews and his team wants it. You look at the total annihilation of the uh, right wing of the Labor Party and you see the way in which the socialist left now dominates public policy and more and more the dreams of the socialist left for the last decade are becoming a reality, um, going straight through the organisation and now being forced onto business. Marcus.